but I can tell you, bad man. <laughs> <laughs> so, hi everyone. Hi everyone. We're at DG OBX 2015, day one. So here's our question, and we're gonna give you an answer. All right, so the question is, we're working with the five allies in the asana, which are the foundation of your asana, the, uh, the breathing, really bringing out the breath, the central axis of the body, this vertical line, the bandhas, so Mula Bandha, Uriyana Bandha, and Jalandhara Bandha that are at the ends of the axis, and the Drishti, so the gaze, but all of the senses. Okay, so, the, so we are working so hard to, to, to build the asana using these allies. And the question was, well, how do I take that later off the mat? Okay, so what? Yeah, I get a, I fix up my triangle or whatever it is, but how do I fix up my attitude when road rage happens or just whatever, just basic things happen, okay? And Mateo is asking that question and I called him bad man. <laughs> it's a, and because it comes to that, like Guruji, my teacher, he, his statement was, Yoga is 99% practice, 1% theory. Okay, and so what it, but, and practice, it means practical. It's practical. So th to think that somehow when you achieve an asana through those five allies, that that is only a physical position is a big mistake. That isn't a physical position you've achieved. That's a whole demeanor, a whole consciousness, a whole way of being inside of yourself. And so you have, you, so you, so that physical thing that you do, it informs your reaction, how you are respond emotionally or intellectually, right? So that it's, the answer is the same. You actually do the asana in the moment. Hey, when you respond in anger and you know you're angry or you're having desire that you is not wholesome, some kind of thing you want to follow through on, well, then you have to do the same. You have to actually go into the feeling of the asana, the experience of that position. It's not different. It's, and to think that they're different is to think almost like that the theory is more important than the practice, right? That that somehow, that there's some theory or way of thinking about it that is going to make it better, that's different than the actual thing that you do. Okay, so it's a very interesting thing to actually align yourself when you're mad or when you're jealous. And actually try it, try to do Mula Bandha when you're mad. You'll, well, you'll, one thing you'll see, they cannot go together. <laughs> there is no rule of under when you are in a fit of something, or rather, when you have given in to some desire that you don't want to act on, but you are doing it, whether it's like a food thing or a emotional outburst or whatever it is, some kind of response, right? So that, and they, those obstacles, they talk about it in the Yoga Sutras, they, they even give it to you, okay? That they tell you that the, the bodily state that accompanies obstacles, which is an interruption of breathing. Okay, the mind is disturbed. The breathing is disturbed when you are upset, when vritti, when your mind becomes, <gasps> when it's going out and taking you off track. And so the, the actual thing is, this is the training to do that. You, you actually orient yourself the physical orientation is part of the psychological orientation that you need to transform or to learn. It's very hard, and, to, well, and so is doing the asana. But and so is when, and especially, and he started this by saying that, like we, we correct, like oh my left leg constantly does this when I go into upward dog, and we're like working on that. And it's, it's a repetitive thing. It's just so hard to eradicate those habits. And then the reaction is the same. My emotional reaction to this stimulus is 
Just so repetitive and so undesirable. But there it is. I keep doing it anyway. Okay? And so, but that, it's the same response. That there's, it's a kind of asana-based response. A breathing response. Um, and, and a very physical response in a way. That you use the power of your hatha yoga to try to get at it. And you have to be so patient, too, because, because of the entrenched nature of it, right? And that's what I said, the word karuna means compassion, mercy, right? That that's one of the attributes of this self. Self is merciful. There's so much compassion because there's so much repetition, so much sanskara. So much grooved repetition of behavior and response that is causing more suffering. So you think that it's going to be, lead to pleasure or fulfillment, but it never does. And so you have to respond with the same techniques. It's the same. And so in that sense, it's like you almost never leave the asana. You never leave the the principles that the asana is based on. And so then it also shows you that there are more than physical principles. There, it's more that mula bandha is not a physical contraction of the pelvic floor. It's an energetic sealing in uh, energy. You seal so that, so that awareness can come. Right, because so anger, it, anger can only go on when you're not aware. If you're projecting it out, if that person is to blame or that thing, then you'll just go for it. But if you contain it and you like aware, whoa, I'm so pissed off at that. <laughs> then what can you do? I mean, you might continue to be mad, but you can't get so invested in it. And you can't respond the same. You can't believe in it. You can't believe it's right or that that's the way you should respond to it. And that's a big start towards doing something different, changing it, right? Are there any hearts that's going? I got you. <laughs> the hearts are going. <laughs> so it's almost right. like there's built in, there's like a built in level, like built in things that we do to avoid foundation. Yeah. Yeah. Built in things that we do to avoid the foundation. In, in physically, and emotionally, everywhere. And, yeah, I mean, there's, should we go further or we had enough of that? What time is it? I think um, we have to move on to Sanyama studies, right? We do. Uh, it's up to I, you. Just, I just want one more little point about this. It's, it opens up a whole thing, but I'm going to make it, and I'm not going to go <laughs> way into the rabbit hole with it. <laughs> but you have to understand that the obstacles that you have those are, they really do, they're there because they need to be there, especially these ones that are repeated, okay? It's a very hard concept to understand, except for that you, you have to understand that the very budding up against that obstacle, the very confrontation with the, the same response shapes you in a certain way. Whereas if that obstacle wasn't there, there would be no bumping up against it. There would be no having to identify it or understand it, what that obstacle is, to relate to it, or even, even the mercy or the compassion that has to come to it. Right? All of that is so necessary to, to you being who you are. You understand? Like, Because you, who you are, you're, you're like a sculptor that's chiseling. Yoga's chiseling that. You're, you're, it's taking shape. Slowly, slowly, it's coming. What is this identity that's coming through yoga? And that the obstacle, like there's certain parts that are so hard to chisel and to make happen. But when that actually finally does happen, you'll see why. There's a reason. It had to be expressed that way. I'll, I'll give you an example. It's a very personal example. And so my, my mother is totally anti-yoga. 
Sorry, mom, if she's watching, which she's not lovely. <laughs> but she loves me to death. She loves me, right? And so we have this whole relationship, this dance around never mentioning the word yoga. <laughs> Right? So I, and I never get any recognition. She's never seen any book I've written, never, never seen one post online, never seen anything I've done. Never said, wow, that's so awesome you do that, David. Never gotten that word from her. I never will. Okay? So that could be so negative. I could hate her. I could just be like, <laughs> right? <laughs> I could. I could never talk to her, right? Because she, I feel uh, that's such a rejection. But I don't do that. In fact, I realize somehow I need not to get that recognition from my mother. I have to. That's, life has presented that to me. Because if I got that recognition, then something, something that I need would not come. I, I need to supply that re recognition or it needs to come from somewhere else. And that's the reality. Okay, and that, there's so many of those we all have in our body, in our psychology, in our history, and you, you have to make the best of it, okay? You, and you have to turn it around and see that that is a gift. Like, if you were given that, oh, well, what if I had the mom that was just, let's do yoga when you come home. <laughs> I'd never be that person I am, okay? And so, but, and that's part of like loving the person you are, is seeing, wow, that's awesome, somehow. Even though you get so sad about it. It's so tragic, so hurtful in a way, right? And all the obstacles that you face about yourself, they hurt. But you can turn it around. You have to. So, there you go. All right. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. Namaste. <laughs>